everybody. My name is Daniel. I am on staff here at The Rocks. Uh, before I begin today's message, there are a couple of things I want to say. First, if you are new to our church, please uh, forgive us for the slight glitches during the, the singing because of the <laughs> computer error. The lyrics didn't come on time. We're usually pretty good at that, so please um, accept our apologies. And number two, if you are new to our church, I want you, and you're free, if you're free tonight, I want you to sign up for next welcome dinner. It is not a membership class. There's no obligation whatsoever. It's just a get-to-know you session. We want to get to know you, and we want you to get to know us. If you're looking for a church home especially, uh, you can ask us any questions that you want uh, about our vision, about why we exist, and so on. So it's happening tonight at 6.30. You can sign up yourself by going to therocks.info, or at the end of our gathering, just go to the Cannington Wall outside and just look for someone who looks like they know what they're doing, and they can sign you up. All right, and there's one more very important announcement that I want you uh, to pay attention to. For the past couple of weeks, we've been announcing from this stage that we're going to change our gathering times in February from three, nine, three gatherings, which is 9, 10, 30, and 12, to two gatherings, which is 9 and 11. And the reason why we were thinking of that is because uh, since COVID, uh, our attendance has not yet gone up to where it used to be, and we care about our volunteers. They've been working so hard. When we thought to ourselves, if we can combine some of the gatherings together, it would be great to give our volunteers a break. But for the past couple of Sundays, especially last Sunday, uh, our attendance has grown up, grown significantly. And, and for your safety, for the safety of our volunteers, uh, we think it is impossible for us to reduce our gathering into two. So that's why starting this February, we will continue our gathering times as is. So we're going to continue meeting at 9, 10, 30, and 12. So make sure that you tell your friends if they're not here that we're going to Continue the same gathering times, 9, 10, 30, and 12. And if you can afford to come to the 12 p.m., uh, that would help us a lot. That would free up some space for our guests to come to either 9 and 10, 30. That would be fantastic. And we thank God that God is growing our church and that things are returning back to normal. And we want to continue to pray that God will use us to reach more and more people for, uh, for Himself for the sake of his glory. Amen. So right now, I want to get on with my message. Why don't we just bow our head one more time and ask God to lead our time together. Father God, we thank you for working in our midst. We thank you for your presence in this place. Lord, we just want to be faithful to your calling in our lives. And I know that we are all here for a reason. So Father, I pray that you speak to us like only you can. Open our hearts and open our minds, we pray in Jesus' name. If you agree with me, say amen. Um, in the movie Cast Away, Chuck Nolan, played by Tom Hanks, is isolated on this deserted island after a plane crash. And he has no one to relate to, so he creates someone out of a volleyball. And he names him Wilson. And for the next four years, Wilson is his only friend. And Wilson becomes more important to him than he even realizes. There are a couple of really moving scenes in the movie where he gets angry with Wilson and eventually he actually lost Wilson and he just weeps and weeps and weeps as a result. So the question that maybe you were wondering and I was wondering is like, why did he do that? Why did he feel the need to create Wilson? The answer is very simple, because he couldn't stand to be alone in this deserted island. And the reason why he couldn't stand to be alone in this deserted island is because he's not created that way. No one is designed to be alone. It doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not. Maybe you don't even believe in God, but I really do believe that you are not meant to live your life alone. In the 70s, there's this famous sitcom uh, called Cheer. I don't know if you've seen the sitcom. One of my favorite sitcoms is about a bar in Boston. And the theme song of this sitcom is wonderful. I think it speaks the truth about the human condition. It says this, making your way in the world today takes everything you've got. Taking a break from all your worries sure would help a lot, 
Wouldn't you like to get away? Sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name and they're always glad you came. You want to be where you can see our troubles are all the same. You want to be where everybody knows your name. Wouldn't it be wonderful to find a place like this? You know, I want to find a place like this where I can belong, where, I don't know if it's realistic actually, where, <laughs> a place where everybody knows your name, but you want to belong to a place where at least some people know your name, right? And wouldn't it be fantastic if church can be this kind of place? But unfortunately, maybe some of you have experienced this. I have experienced this. Church is the last place that looks like this, unfortunately. And that's why this morning I feel like it's important for us to actually pay attention to this part of our Christian journey about the importance of belonging to a community, to, to an authentic community. And I'm calling today's message Better Together, all right? You have heard this expression before. You can choose your friends, but you can't choose your family. How many of you have weird people in your family? Raise your hand. You have weird people in your family? Yeah, 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 yeah. I see your hands. For those of you who sit there thinking, we don't have any weird people in our family, that means you are the weird one, okay? <laughs> That's why you don't raise your hands. I'm just kidding. Uh, but it's true, isn't it? You can't choose your family with all their idiosyncrasies, with all their weirdness, you know, you just have to learn to love them because they're your family. You fight, you know, you argue, but at the end of the day, they are your family. Do you know that if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, you also have another family? It is like, actually, this is good news. Uh, Paul says in Ephesians 2.19, you followers of Jesus Christ, are members of God's family and you belong in God's household along with every other Christian. Here's the good news. If you are not a follower of Jesus Christ, if you're new to Christianity, the good news is this, that God wants to have a relationship with you. That's right. The creator of the universe wants nothing else out of you than to have a real, genuine relationship with you. Maybe you're thinking like, how is that possible? He's the creator of the universe. That's right, but He also is your heavenly Father. He created you. And that, cre that relationship that He has with you is broken because of sin. That's why, out of His love for you, He sent His one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die on our behalf. So that broken relationship, that, that, broken relationship that we have with Him is mended again. And that's why, you know, you, He is. You gain a new Father, a heavenly Father. Not only that, but when you choose to trust Him, you have this eternal life that you receive by believing in Him. Jesus says when you do that, you are born again. When you trust Jesus as your Savior, you are born again into this new family. Just like you were born into your physical family, when you trust Jesus, you are born into a new family, the family of God. So look around you, these wonderful, weird people. They are your family. You are my family. You're my brother. You're my sister. You're my brother. You're my sister. We're all siblings. So we better learn to get along with one another, with all our weirdness, right? And like in any family, if you belong to a family, I'm sure you have some rules in your family, right? Like, don't milk the dog. Maybe that's a rule. Uh, don't eat your own booger. Maybe that's a rule. I don't know what rules you have in your family. In the family of God, there is also a rule. I don't know if you know there's a rule in the family of God, but the rule is simple. It's wonderful. This is the rule. Jesus said in John 13, 34, 35, a new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. Your love for one another will prove to the world that you are my followers, that you are my disciples. Notice in these very, very short verses, Jesus mentions love one another, love one another, love one another three times. Jesus did not say tolerate one another. Jesus did not say, try to understand one another. Jesus did not say, uh, agree with one another. And here's another thing. Jesus didn't even say, like one another. I'm glad Jesus didn't say, like one another, because I love all of you, but you can finish the sentence yourself. Some of you are not very likable, okay? Uh, some of you are done right. 
No, nasty to me, uh, but it's okay. We are a family. We need to learn to love one another. That's, only, that's the only rule that Jesus gave us, all right? And that's why it is important for us to learn to get along with one another because we are a family of God. Of course, when you were born again, you belong to the universal church, right? You belong to the family of God worldwide. But many times when the Bible, the New Testament especially, mentions the word church, it's always referring to specifically a local church. Just like when you were born physically, you belong to the human race. But until someone brings you home, you'll be an orphan. You'll be like homeless. Again, a Christian without a church home is homeless. Some of you have chosen your home, right? But the important thing is this. We all need to learn to belong to a family and get along. The bottom line, Jesus is trying to say, what Jesus is trying to say is this. How we love one another is so much more important than what we know. The true sign of spiritual growth, spiritual maturity, is not how much we know. How many churches do you know that claim to have the corner on truth? Like, we are, we are, the, we are the best theology. We are the best doctrine. How many Christians just crave, we want more Bible study. You know, we want more of this. We want, more, we want deeper teaching, which is all fantastic, by the way. But Jesus said, Mm-mm. the bottom line is, If you don't learn to love one another, you're not really growing in the faith. So that is the sign of spiritual maturity. So the question that I want to pose to all of us this morning is this. How do we go from simply belonging to the family of God to finding friendship in the family of God? So this morning, I want to give you four quick tips how you can find friendship in your local church family, whether here or anywhere else, all right? Number one is this. Take personal responsibility for your relationships. Listen to this Proverbs. The righteous should choose his friends carefully because the way of the wicked leads him astray. Pay attention. The righteous should choose his friends carefully. See, implicit in this statement is this pro. It's, it's proactivity, isn't it? It's like you choose. That means like you're doing something. So it is your responsibility to find relationships. If you just stay in your room, you don't want to connect with anybody, you just play games all day, or you just work all day, all night, of course, it's difficult for you to find meaningful relationships. It is your responsibility. Uh, the church will try their very best, or well, at least this church, will try our best to just give you possible connection points. But at the end of the day, it takes two to tango, all right? We can try our very best, but unless you actually make it personal, unless you say, this is my responsibility to find connection, then you will not be connected to anybody, all right? It is your personal responsibility. And who you choose to be friends with is also extremely important. Listen to these other Proverbs. He who walks with the wise will become wise, but the companion of fools will be destroyed. If you walk with the wise, you will become wise. If you walk with fools, you will become a fool. If you walk with the skeptics, you will be skeptic. If you walk with the cynics, you will be cynical. But if you walk with passionate, on fire, committed followers of Jesus Christ, guess what's going to happen? You will be a passionate, you know, on fire, committed follower of Jesus Christ. So it's important who you hang around with. It is your responsibility to find good friends in the right place, and church can be that place. That's number one. Number two, connect meaningfully by serving the family. This is your family, and the fastest way for you to connect with a church family is through serving. How many of you have seen this at the airports? What do you, what do you call this? Travelators, right? What is the purpose of a travelator? The purpose is to help you to get from one point to the next to your destination quicker, especially in big airports, right? You have to go to one, one terminal to another, maybe a connecting flight, you know. Uh, you might miss it if you don't have any help. So the travelator helps you to get to your destination quicker. Let me tell you, if you are new to church especially, serving is the quickest way to, for you to find connection in the church. And not only that, it is actually 
part of our joy and our responsibility as a member of church family as well. Listen to what Peter says. God has given each of you. If you think you are without a gift, you are wrong. God has given each of you a gift from His great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God Himself were speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies. It is our responsibility. I think there are a lot of Christians today who are very consumeristic. You know, we always ask the wrong questions like, what can you do for me? What can you do for my family? That's the wrong question to ask. The right question to ask is like, what can I do to help this family to grow? That's a better question, isn't it? Because it is our joy and our responsibility as a family member. This is not church, okay? This is not church. You might be wondering, like, why? Oh, it's obvious. Why do you show that, Daniel? It's like, that's Hilton. That's a hotel. Of course, that's not church. I remember growing up, you know, sometimes I would come home late, and I would, like, leave early in the morning. My parents used to say to me all the time, hey, you think this is a hotel? It's not a hotel, okay? Because, you know, sometimes as a teenager, you know, I treat my, my home as, as a hotel, and my parents, uh, you know, uh, pointed that to me, like, hey, this is your family. Vacuuming is part of your responsibility. Doing chores, doing this is part of your responsibility because this is your family. It's the same thing with church, right? This is not a hotel where you just wait for people to serve you and you complain when the service is not up to your level, you know? That's not the attitude that Christ followers need to have. It is all our responsibility because this community that we're in, is so important to the community around us. There are a lot of people outside our window who don't yet know Jesus Christ as their Savior, who don't know, do not yet know that there's a God who loved them. It is our responsibility to work together with joy to serve one another. That's number two. And the side benefit is you get to connect with people. Number three, take time to hang together. It is important for us not just to gather once a week on Sunday, but it is important for us to continue fellowshipping with one another. Listen to Hebrews 10.25. Let us not neglect our meeting together, as some people do, but encourage one another, especially now that the day of His return is drawing near. At least it's drawing nearer and nearer. We don't know when that is, but our opportunity is limited. And here, I believe, meeting together is not just referring to a church service because a lot of people interpret Hebrews 10 that way. Like, okay, do not stop coming to church on Sunday. Well, that's a part of it, I believe, but it's not just that. Why? Because that part, encouraging one another, you can't do that by just sitting in rows like that, listening to someone like me speak, right? Encouraging one another means there's interaction. Encouraging one another means there's, like the encourage, there's a party that is encouraging, there's a party that is being encouraged, right? So that's why I believe this refers to like our fellowship, not just on Sunday morning, but maybe even throughout the week. It is our duty. If you want to find meaningful connection, to get connected with one another outside of church on Sunday as well, okay? That's number three. And we will tell you a bit later on, what are those connection points outside Sunday morning? And finally, number four, if you want to find meaningful friendship, meaningful connection in the church, you have to risk being vulnerable, okay? You have to risk being vulnerable. I came across this church signage um, recently. See if you understand what it's saying. <laughs> we love hurting people. Um, Whoever is in charge of communication in this church needs to be fired, right? <laughs> but we all know what it's supposed to mean. It means we love people who are hurting. That's, that's what it means. But it can be read wrongly. However, as funny as it sounds, unfortunately, in some aspect, this is too close to our heart. It's, it's true, isn't it? Sometimes church, churches hurt people. Some of you have been the victims of hurt by your previous church, maybe. And that's why you haven't been coming to church. That's why you told yourself, I will never, ever go back to church ever again. Because the people that you trust, the people that, that you think are for you, 
They're the ones that hurt you the most, and you said, that's it. I'm not going to put myself out there anymore at the risk of being hurt again. But let me tell you, what is your option? Let me tell you. Your other option, you don't want that, all right? Because you are created for connection, you are not created to live in isolation. So getting, being vulnerable is part of being connected. You know, when you relate to people, there's always a risk of getting hurt. And let me tell you, that is part and parcel of life. It is unfortunate. And, and, and as you uh, find out more and more, as you, maybe you're deciding to make this church your home, you, you know, and you start serving, you start fellowshipping with people, you will get hurt because that's what we do when we work together, when we serve together. Uh, of course, we're bound to be misunderstood. We're bound to say something that is wrong and, and all that. It's common. We have to exercise and learn to love one another. And that's how you grow, by the way, right? You can't grow by belonging to a perfect community. Where's your opportunity to exercise the spiritual gift? Where's the opportunity if you belong to a perfect community? Where's your chance to exercise patience, to exercise forgiveness, to exercise grace and care? No chance, right? Only when you belong to a, a, a community that is not perfect, then you get to grow in your faith because then you learn to forgive. Then you learn to be gracious. Then you learn to be understanding. You learn to be patient and so, that, and so on, okay? So, four points, four e not easy ways, but four different ways you can get connected to a local church. Number one, make sure you take a personal responsibility for your own relationships. Number two, uh, connect through serving and take time to hang out together. And then finally, number four, you have to say this to yourself. Remind yourself, hey, relationship means risk. And it is okay because you don't want the alternative. You don't want to be talking to a volleyball, okay? Because no one wants to talk to you or you don't want to talk to anyone. I want to show you a powerful testimony by, by one of our own. His name is Amir. And Amir has a wonderful testimony to share with us. He did not grow up in a church family. Uh, he was actually far from God. He came to our church. And the, the way God works in his life uh, to bring him where he is is really amazing. Enjoy this testimony. Hi, my name is Amir Tanari. My family has been attending The Rocks for about a couple of years now. I remember clearly the first time I attended The Rocks Church in Kennington. I was greeted with warm smiles and it was the welcoming feeling that keeps us coming back to this church. Back then, we hardly knew anyone, but we realised some of our kids' school friends were attending the same church. My wife and I separately attended Answer and Follow. These are small group type courses that helps us have a firm grasp of Christian faith and teach us how to be a good follower of Jesus Christ. Through these courses, I have the privilege to meet some wonderful people that I otherwise wouldn't have known. A couple of months later, my wife started serving at Wonderland. I can see that she finds joy and a sense of fulfillment from being able to serve God by serving the young children. By doing so, she also has the opportunity to meet a number of parents and volunteers. Some have also become close friends. My wife is my inspiration for me to serve at The Rocks. I choose The Rocks parking team because of my fond experience when I first came to The Rocks. I want to help to create the same experience for others, especially for those who come to the church for the very first time. I want to be the first to greet and the last to meet. I believe I can contribute to this community by showing the kindness and joy that God has blessed me with. Through serving, I get to also meet a number of new friends whom I feel privileged to know. A few months ago, my wife and I also joined a small group under the leadership of Robin and team. It's a gathering where we pray together, discuss and learn how to apply what is learned at church and we eat together. We feel very blessed to be part of this small group and I believe that we are forming a lifetime of friendship and fellowship through our small group. Well, that's it from me. If you are new to The Rocks, or maybe you've been here for a while, but have not yet found a community, I would like to encourage you to get connected. Our church has provided different ways you can be connected. Please visit therocks.info for more information. 
Finally, I would like to thank God for finding our home at the rocks. Thank you for listening to my story, and I will see you at the parking lot. Thank you, Amir. And you will see him at the parking lot because he is rostered today. So make sure before you go home, you say hi to Amir. You see how wonderful God has been working in his life and in his family's life um, by not just coming to church, but by coming to answer. They got to know a few people. By serving, they got to know more people. By belonging to a small group, they got to know even more people. And that's the way God grows our faith, and that's the way God will grow our church, isn't it? Because it's not all about us at the end of the day, but it's all about the people that we belong to and the people that we are serving. There will be times in your life where you will be on top and you can encourage others. But there will be times in your life where you'll be rock bottom and you need encouragement from others. And only when you belong to an authentic community can you get or give that kind of support. I mean, said, if you go to rocks.info, uh, you can find a way to be connected to our church. And the easy way is, you know, just take your mobile phone, type in your Safari or Chrome, www.therocks.info. And when you click on the tab that says connect, you'll be brought to this, to this page. There are different ways to connect, uh, meetups, short-term groups, and small groups. Unfortunately, our small groups are all full right now. We are still training new leaders, so uh, that, would, that won't be available temporarily. But I want to introduce you to this new initiative that we have called meetups. What are they? Uh, meetups are a way to connect people around a shared interest, from activities people enjoy to topics people want to discuss and learn. A meetup helps build relationships with people who care about what you care about. If you care about golf, if you care about um, car fixing or whatever, that could be a possible meetup for you. If you're interested to become a host of meetup, let us know. There will be people later after the gathering at the Cannington Wall, who can help you with that, all right? And already we have a few meetups going on in the month of February. We have table tennis, personal finance, budgeting, crochet. If you like crocheting, that's a way for you to meet new people, but that's in Baldivis if you don't mind driving there. Uh, young adults have a lunch hang every Sunday, mums and bobs, and we also have uh, online meetup. I will be doing an online meetup. If you have any question that you want to ask about theology and all that, that's happening as well. You can go to rocks.info to find out. I actually have a short uh, example of how you can do this. Click connect. You'll be brought to this space. And it's very easy. Uh, there are different kinds of meetups. There's a... Uh, there you go. If you click meetups. There is uh, activity-based meetups, like sports, for example. There's a conversation-based meetup, meetups, and there's also helping hand, volunteering-based kind of meetups if you want to volunteer somewhere uh, together. That's a possible as well. And then you just click register. It's very easy. Someone will contact you or there's the name of the host will also be there. You can contact them. And let me tell you, whatever it takes, make sure you find a way to get connected because the bottom line is this, okay? This is my vision for our church. I don't care if people think we are cool or not as a church. And I don't think people care either, okay? I believe what people really care about is this. They care about how warm we are, not how cool we are. And I want us to be known as a warm church that accept, accepts one another as they are and grow together as a family of God here in this place. So again, I want to really, really encourage you to not just come on Sunday, but find a place, find a connection point somewhere where you can grow in your faith and grow this church together as a church family with us, all right? We're going to close by having a Holy Communion because it's appropriate, isn't it? The word community and communion, it all comes from the same root word. So if you have the elements uh, that have been given to you on your way in, please hold it. Hold on to them because we're going to consume them together. If you uh, don't receive any, would you just raise your hands? Our host will be more than delighted to give it to you. Just keep your hands up until you get the communion elements. Let me explain what this is all about for those of you who are newer to Christianity. 
on the last night of his life on earth, Jesus took some of his closest friends to an upper room and they had a meal together like they usually do. But this time, Jesus put a special significance to that last meal. And Jesus said, this bread that you see, this wine that we're about to drink, they represent something more. The bread represents his broken body and the wine represents his poured out blood for the forgiveness of sin. And Jesus commanded his friends to keep doing this, to remember what he did. So this is why we do this, because communion, community is not just between us, brothers and sisters in Christ, but it's also about our communion, our community with God, our Heavenly Father as well, okay? So if you are a Christ follower, doesn't matter if you come to this church or not, you are more than welcome to join us in this. But if you're not yet a Christ follower, this will not mean anything to you. So don't be embarrassed. Feel free to not participate in this. Our prayer is that someday you get to participate in this with us, okay? The band is going to lead us into a time of reflection and worship by singing this song, one of my favorite songs called Waymaker. Whatever your situation that you're in right now, I want to tell you that God is a way maker. Whatever you think is impossible in your life right now, I want to remind you, for God, there is nothing that is impossible. He is a way maker. More than that, He makes it possible for you and for me to relate to Him and to relate to one another. Let's all stand and sing this song from the bottom of our hearts and I'm going to come back and lead us in communion together.
He is indeed a way maker. He makes it possible for sinners like us to have a communion with the Almighty God Himself. Why don't you take the bread and raise it above your head? Jesus loves us so much that He sacrificed Himself to make it possible for us to relate not only to one another, but also to relate back to our Heavenly Father. On the night He was betrayed, Jesus took the bread, and when He had given thanks, He broke it, and He said, This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us eat this bread by faith, and with thanksgiving in our hearts. Let us raise this cup. After supper, Jesus took the cup and He said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this every time you drink it in remembrance of me. Let us drink this cup by faith and with thanksgiving in our hearts that the blood of Jesus purifies us from all our sin. In Jesus' name. Well, that brings us to the end of our gathering together. It is a custom in our church to be dismissed by receiving a prayer of blessing. I want to remind you about next welcome dinner again tonight happening. Make sure you sign up if you're free tonight, if you're new to our church. And also, this coming Sunday, we're starting a brand new series called Devoted. Tim Healy is going to be bringing that message series. I'm looking forward to it. Make sure you come and invite your friends. And after the prayer of blessing today, if you need a specific prayer, please come forward. Our prayer leaders will be standing here. They would love to pray with you and for you. We are your church family. We want to intercede on your behalf as well, so make sure you do that. But right now, if you're comfortable, why don't you open your hands as a sign of our surrender and dependence on our God. Father God, we thank you for today. We thank you for reminding us that you saved us into a family, Lord, that we can belong to, that we can get encouraged and give encouragement and dismiss us this morning with your blessings, we pray. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, our Heavenly Father, and the fellowship, the power, the anointing of the Holy Spirit be with you wherever you go. May God bless you through and through. May God bless your family, your children, your grandchildren. May God bless your relationship. May God bless your finance, your health. May God bless everything that you do so that through you, people around you will be blessed now and forevermore. Everyone who's blessed, say it together with me, Amen. Amen. God bless you, everybody. Have a wonderful Sunday.